Hey, what's going on guys? It's Mystic V, and today we're going to talk about the Indie Regionals. It just finished up, and we now have the official Top 8 cut and all the decks that have won in the event. So, without further ado, let's go over what made these decks so competitive, so strong, and have basically opened up a whole new format for Yu-Gi-Oh! I'll sacrifice 7 seconds as a tribute and start the intro. <laughs> Alright guys, just to preface this, all of the names of the players has been omitted for safety reasons. Apparently these guys are so hardcore that they have hitmen after them, but uh, it's understandable. Gotta uh, protect people's privacy and all that. So, without further ado, let's get into what I can basically decipher is their deck list. A couple of these guys, they have pretty shoddy handwriting, no offense to them. They probably had a lot of time uh, building the deck, but not very much time putting it down into their deck lists. So without further ado, let's get over this. The first deck from this regional that we're going to report on is a magician, uh, it's like a magician mythical beast supreme gate uh, pendulum deck. So honestly, we could just call it a pendulum deck, but let's get into it. So uh, straight up off the top, we've got three harmon uh, three wisdom eye magician, three uh, black fang magician, and three harmonizing magician, and three purple poison magician. Just the standard, get as many of your uh, named magicians that can work off of each other as possible. We also have one time gazer and one stargazer. These guys are basically triggerable off of chronograph and astrograph. Uh, we run one oaf dragon in here, and he also ran three chronograph sorcerers and three astrograph sorcerers. So this basically is going to probably be a pretty stereotypical uh, build for at least the core magician stuff. Now that Chronograph and Astrograph can basically you do the you make the best of their ability to summon out a monster from deck for free, they're gonna try their best to try and trigger out Heavy Metal Flow's Electromite summoning condition as fast as possible. And so by doing so, they not they don't really mind about having what they would consider a big brick in old times, but it's not a brick anymore. Uh, Time Gazer and Stargazer are both pendulum monsters, so in every respect, they're just monsters on the field now. So then they also have three of the Mythical Beast Master Cerberus. This guy is the level 8 guy, and uh, he's pretty strong. He can't be destroyed by card effects and when he has enough uh, spell counters on him. And due to the fact that the format is kind of aggressive right now and regressive at the same time, it's sort of, sort of having a large trap, large spell base, uh, being able to bring this guy out and having him enough unaffected by stuff like Torrential Tribute and Bottomless makes sense. It's, it's a... It's a good card to have, and also it allows him to go into stuff like Hope Harpenter, Dragon, Titanic, Galaxy, which is pretty intense. We then have two Mythical Beast Jackal King. This guy allows you to bring out your uh, extra deck Mythical Beast monsters by popping him in your Pendulum Scale, so he's actually probably what allows you to basically recur your Cerberus once it's died, because it being a high level makes it a little tougher to summon out. Then we've got two Supreme King Dragon Dark Worms and one Supreme Gate Zero. This is part of your standard combo. Uh, him running the alerts, the Dragon Trines, and all that stuff allows him to get this stuff out as fast as possible. And by doing so, it allows him also to kind of get a Pendulum Monster on the field so that he can make Electromite again. This is basically the full goal of any modern Pendulum deck now. And then two Hand Traps, Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. That's the last of his monster cards right there. Going over to his spell, he's basically crumped down to the bare minimums. Three alerts, two Dragon Shrine, one Foolish one star pendulum graph and one upstart goblin basically all he needs is base uh, to th sit down any card that can start a combo he's just going to run to as much as possible allure of darkness seems to be in here purely for the sake of deck thinning and that's about it can't really say much about it super crisp clean no excess no bricks one pen time pendulum graph exists in this deck because of the fact that that, well, you could still use Time Pendulum Graph and pop cards on your opponent's turn if you draw into it. So it's not too bad of a single trap. Then his side deck is two Lava Golem, one Guiding Ariadne, one other Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, two Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, two Wavering Eyes, three Twin Twisters, one Warning, or sorry, one, I think that's, yeah, one Warning, two Scolding, and one Judgment. Basically, he can side into a Counter Trap engine if he felt like swapping out the Mythical Beast, at least that's what I gathered in my eyes. Uh, the extra deck I was not able to make out completely, so bear with me. This is uh, pretty... I can't really read all of it, so I'm just going to try and do the best I can. Three Heavy Metal Flows Electromite, one Zephyr Metaltron, one of the... Oh, man, there's a dragon here. Borolo Dragon, one Underclock Taker, one Cyframe Lord Omega, one Odd Eyes Venom Dragon, two Supreme, Ki uh, Supreme King Dragon Starving Venom? Yeah, I think that's it. One Time Star Magician, one Norito... Uh, I do not know if this is Odd Eyes Absolute Dragon or not, but it makes sense because there are sevens in the deck that you can now make into this guy. Odd Eyes Absolute Dragon seems like a cool choice. 
one Hope Harbinger Dragon Titanic Galaxy, and I cannot read off the last card. I apologize to whoever made this, but I can't read your hand handwriting for the life of me. Sorry, guys. But basically, that's the first deck that did well. It was, it was you know, sit down 40 cards as fast as possible, turbo out your Heavy Metal Fizz Electromite, and get everything set up. So overall, very strong cards, and... This is a pretty crisp and uh, pristine deck. The extra deck is really up to speculation. It's really, like, uh, it's unique in the way that it kind of swaps a complete deck over, and that often can change the game two and the game three for you if you really, like, if people don't expect it. So being able to swap over to a much more defensive play with the Solemns and all that stuff, it's good on this guy for thinking outside the box. Good for him. Next up, guys, I'm going to go over here to the next one. We have Trick Stars. Trick Stars being the basically most untouched deck of the last format. This deck is incredibly powerful due to the fact that it can run massive amounts of hand traps and never worry about bricking. So with this, we have three Candina, three Licorice, uh, one Lily Bell, three Eater of Millions, three Ash Blossoms, three Droll and Locks, three Ghost Ogres, and one Spiral Super Agent. That tech little Spiral Super Agent seems to be the opt uh, out to effectively get a special summon out for free, and it's probably just an added beatdown. It seems pretty interesting, and it may just factor into just a control variant, so unique little choice there. We are for spells, we have three terraforming, three Trickstar light stage, three scapegoat for your link plays, three, oh, one set rotation, it seems as though the person wrote three, one spiral resort, one oracle of Zephyr, and two pot of desires. Basically, you now that the spiral engine has kind of, oh, that makes sense, running one spiral resort to tutor for the super agent, that's, that's smart. Having the light stages, having the set rotation, spiral resort, and oracle of Zephyr basically allows the people who are playing field spells against him to kind of get screwed over. This may, might have been one of the reasons that ABC did not top at this regional, and uh, it, it shows really well. Um, Pot of Desires is, of course, always your good draw engine. Let's go over to the traps. Three reincarnations, three strikes, and one judgment enables you to never draw a bad trap. Uh, a lot of players, I've noticed, were opting into running the Judgment just because Judgment is so overpowered, and they are absolutely right. Going over to our side deck, we have three Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries to remove any sort of threats from your extra deck, three Unending Nightmare to remove the Pendulum options, three Evenly Matched in the side because they didn't want to opt to main deck it, most likely because they're going first, Raigeki, Dark Hole, and one Jizukiru, Kumongus, and Gamma Seal, as well as one Interrupted Kaiju Slumber to basically remove any sort of boss monsters. This is going to be probably his option to defeat out Towers in case he didn't want to have to worry about uh, a lot of excess. And that's good to know, because his extra deck is effectively, aside from a couple combos, just used for Ghost Reaper. He has one ABC Dragon Buster, totally awesome, Borolo Dragon, Ningirsu, the World Chalice, uh, and then number 41, Baguska, one Trixar Holly Angel, Proxy Dragon, Akashic Magician, Mrs. Radiant, two Leak Spiders, two Link Karibos, one Spiral Double Helix, and one Saryuja Skulldrad. This basically is enabled through the ability to summon out the scapegoats. You make one Link Spider, miter, you, sorry, you make one Leak Spider, you make one Link Karibo, and then you make one Mrs. Radiant, and boom, you can make a Saryuja Skulldrad. That's three material, and if you've normal summoned out something else, you can make Saryuja. Saryuja being very powerful. That's a pretty powerful and consistent deck. Strong anti-meta stun, basically able to beat out almost every deck. Good on this person for building and effectively taking home a top on the top eight. Next up, we have something that caught my eye that was pretty awesome. Inspector Border True Dracos. This guy was basically dropping Inspector Border and then making his True Draco plays and locking down the board from any sort of play. There's nothing in his extra deck because there's nothing needed. The power of this deck lies in Masterpiece, and with that we have two Inspector Borders. Inspector Border basically says, while it's on the field, if you don't have any monsters that are summoned from the extra deck, then or a ritual monster on the field, you can't activate an effect. And if you can, if you can negate that with the one effect they have, if they have one card on the field that is from the extra deck or a ritual, then they can't activate anything else. It's basically a complete and utter monster effect lockdown. It's freaking nuts. And then we run one Ignis Heat, the True Draco Warrior, two Masterpiece, True Draco Knight, dude, and one Majesty Maiden. Uh, then our spell cards, we run three Heritage. He has three. Wait a minute. Yeah. Uh, two each of the True Draco's uh, sp continuous spells, three Card of Demise, three Pot of Duality, one Monarch Stormforth, one Upstart Goblin, one Monster Reborn, three Terraforming, three Diagrams, one Regeki, and one Dark Hole. Also, he has three of the Apocalypse, True Draco Apocalypse. He has one True King Return because it's at one, 
Solemn Judgment. Three anti spells in the main. One Monarch's Erupt, which is effectively a skill drain as, as long as he controls a tribute summoned monster. A skill drain. And one Waterfall of Dragon Souls to tutor for the Majesty Maiden and Ignis Heat and Masterpiece. This is a pretty strong and basically powerful stun option. To run the back row removal uh, would be a good option. Let's go over to his side deck and see if he has done so. He runs two Royal Decrees in the main, as well as... Oh, Wing Dragon of Ross Sphere Mode. Nice little option there. He runs three Zaphion the Time Lord to basically manipulate the field. That's pretty awesome as a choice. Zaphion is a very powerful card. Imperial Order, Macrocosmos, and two Imperial Iron Wall to negate the banished cards. Three Evenly Mashed, and one other Inspector Border in case he felt like he needed a third one. This deck seems to be pretty terrifying due to the fact that it has such a strong amount of draw and just consistent bonus and dropping of monsters. All the monsters that he makes in this deck make a difference as soon as they hit the board. They're not combo pieces, they are the piece. And that's pretty awesome. Good on whoever played this deck at the Indy Regionals. Next up, Spirals are not dead, apparently, because of the fact that Spirals apparently topped in uh, Indy, and uh, good for them. So it seems as though this person was also going to be, if you looked at the top part there, he was going to be playing it at YCS Guatemala, so <laughs> I guess this person was going to have a blast. Um, we got two Super Agents, three Spiral Tough, one Master Plan, one Quick Fix, one Drone. One, uh, one Last Resort, one Sleeper, three Ash Blossom, three Gammas, one Driver, two Trollin' Locks, and two Ghost Ogres. That drops his deck down to 22 monsters. Then he's got one Spiral Resort, one for one, one for one, one Soul Charge, one Monster Reborn, two, uh, one Foolish Burial, one Rota, one S Spiral Mission Assault, three Foolish Burial Goods to dump those rescues into the grave, as well as Terraforming, Pseudo Space, and two Spiral Gear, Big Red. Pseudo Space seems to be in here basically to take the power of the Spiral Resort, but not have to take its backdrop. The fact that Spiral Resort went to one really sucks for the deck, but if you have the ability to grab out other cards and using Terraforming, Performing to get pseudo space. I think you'll be fine. I think this guy was fine. He top eight it at Indy. Uh, then he runs two spiral mission rescue, and then that's the whole deck. It's basically just uh, he focused down more on tr doing his best to kind of make up for the loss of cards in his deck from the forbidden list. He added in the monster reborn, which will do amazingly well in the deck, and he has the pseudo space to kind of f fill in, which is good for him. His side deck is. Three anti spells, two D barriers, two Wiseman's Chalice. That's an interesting tech. Wiseman Chalice allowing him to recover monsters from his opponent's graveyard and then use them for potential link plays. That's actually pretty interesting because it brings a monster back and it says you can't use it for a synchro summon. That doesn't mean you can't use it for an Xyz summon or a link summon. So there's option there. Two full house probably to defeat any sort of stun option, aka Cleeforts and True Dracos. Uh, two Mind Crush, two Effect Veiler, and two Chaos Hunter. Chaos Hunter being his opt to counter banish cards, and I would assume he's trying with the thought in mind to be Trickstars, but Chaos Hunter does not work against Trickstar. I'm just going to give you a heads up on that. He might have not even used it. I have no clue. We're just reading off the report here. His extra deck is two double helix, one Boroload, one Firewall Dragon. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's one proxy, because it looks... Uh, it's two proxy dragon, two decode talker, one Link Karibo, one Trigate Wizard, one Near Girsu, one Princess Sprite, Black Rose Dragon, Cypher Emblem Omega, and then one Ib, and I think that was, oh, Baguska. I thought that was Ningirsu. He has Ningirsu, and he has Baguska in there, so my apologies to whoever is listening in right now. <laughs> then let's go over to the next deck. This was uh, pretty good trying to bring it back, at least, Spirals. All right, this was the one I was excited for, guys. Shadow Dinos topped the Indie Regionals. Let's go over the deck profile and just see it through. Three Overtex Coatlas, three Soul Eating Overraptors, three Ghost Ogres, three Arma Knights, Armageddon Knight, that is, three Ash Blossoms, three Ultimate Conductor Tyrannos, two Giant Rexes, two Shadow Dragon, one Shadow Hedgehog, one Shadow Beast, and one Dogaran, the Mad Flame Kaiju. No miscellaneous Saurus here, just running what he does to bring out the combos and bring out the pain. He runs three Fossil Dig, two Shadow Fusions, 
uh, three double evolution pills, two gold sarks to manipulate your giant rexes, one foolish burial, one monster reborn, one upstart goblin, basically just as crisp as possible, no bricks if you can make it out. Then two floodgate trap holes in the, in the, in the option on traps, that's pretty interesting considering that he could have opted to play so, uh, Solemn Scolding as well, considering that he has no sort of life point loss cards, but uh, Floodgate seemed to have done well because he got top eight. Good for him. And then he runs in his side deck, three Chaos Hunter, three Cosmic Cyclones, three, hey, True Nade! One by Geki, one sh more Shadow Fusion, one, three evenly matched, and the Solemn Judgment in the side. Then for his extra deck, one Lagia, one Dolka, one Rafflesia. That makes sense. Using Rafflesia and having Floodgate enables him to have the option to basically disrupt their opponents on his opponent's turn and burn them out. That's actually, there you go, that's the reason he ran Floodgates instead of Scoldings. You can't tutor for Scolding as well as you could tutor for, for Floodgates, so good for him. One Abyss Dweller, one Baguska, one Diamond Dire, one Tornado Dragon, one Gagaga -ga -ga Samurai, and then he's got, uh, I can't read this guy, uh, it's Sue Reading, I can't read that guy. I cannot read this other card, it's got a bunch of different names on it. Oh, this might be Gustav Max, I think, in here. I don't... I actually have no clue. Well, I can't read that card out for... for so if anybody knows the Dino Dex uh, card down there in the middle, uh, it could be anything, honestly. I have no clue. Uh, then we've got one <laughs> El Shadal Shekinaga, two Windows, one Underclock Taker, one Akashic Magician, and one Decode Talker. This deck seems to opt out to bring out Shadow Winda and then bring out either Coatlas or Ultimate Conductor Tyranno on the opening hand to try and just disrupt and stun the decks that it's playing against. This seems to be incredibly lucrative in terms of how it can basically go off of any deck and really manipulate their opponent's stuff. This seems to be a really strong deck against Trickstar as well, due to the fact that Reincarnation can really manipulate and abuse most decks, but if you have gi uh, Giant Rex out, you're probably going to be able to beat them down as Trickstars have a hard time getting to hit against anything without uh, Eater of Millions. So good on them. Congratulations to whoever played this deck. Next up, guys, we have something a little bit more easy to read, guys. We have another uh, Pendulum deck, this guy using a pretty simple, similar build to the other guy. Uh, he's running his option to play his, uh, his Magicians, and he's playing the larger count for Supreme King Dragon Dark Worm. So he's got three Ash Blossom, three Astrograph, three Black Fang, three Chronograph, three Ghost Ogres, three Harmonizing, two Jackal Kings, and three Master Cerberus, just like the other guy. Three Purple Poison, one Stargazer to bring out though uh, through his Astrograph, uh, three Dark Worms to trigger as much as possible, two Supreme, Kate Zero, Supreme King Gate Zeros, and one Time Star to bring out with a Chronograph. And then he's got one Foolish, two Pot of Desires, and three Wavering Eyes. In the main deck, the Wavering Eyes option can basically enable him to remove all threats as much as possible and triggers astrograph and chronographs in hand so it seems as though with the larger amount of supreme king dragons in his hand it seems as though he may want to just get everything blown up on his side in order to trigger more effects then he's got two time pendulum graphs in his trap uh in his trap roster and that is it Looking over to his side deck, he opts to run Lancia and Chaos Hunter to counter against the, the, the Trickstar deck, as well as two Cosmic Cyclone to counter against them as well. He runs three D-Barrier, three evenly matched, one Hey True Nade, one Regeki, and one Solemn Judgment. To see this in its whole, whole it seems as though he has a lot of uh, modular swap-out cards in his deck to basically just swap out an engine, like he could swap out the Mythical Beast engine, he could swap out the Supreme King Gate engine, and he can just put in whatever he needs to play with the next combo that's going to be in the game two and three. So that seems like a pretty cool and effective option for him. Good on this guy. His extra deck is one Decode Talker, three Heavy Metal Foes Electromite, one Ignister Prominence, one Norito, the Moral Leader, one Hope Harbinger Dragon, one Baguska, one Odd Eyes Absolute Dragon, one Odd Eyes Vortex Dragon, one Omega, two Starving Venoms, one Tornado Dragon, and one Zephyr Metaltron. And that wraps up this deck. It seems as though they're following a couple similar uh, similarities, basically in the ability to use uh, utilize Cerberus as much as possible because it's level 8 to make Hope Harbinger Dragon. It seems like a really strong option. And with Heavy Metal Foes Electromite basically giving you three, two extra deck monsters to bring out, you could, in theory, like just go completely ham. So there's a lot of power output potential in these new variants. So the Mythical Beast cards are definitely an opt to splash in. So good for this guy for playing it out and doing well at the Indie Regionals. 
And with this, guys, we go to another spiral deck. This one opting to run Drone Lockbirds in the mains and Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbits in the mains, as well as the three Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. So let's go in. He's got all of those I've previously mentioned above, as well as one, one uh, of each of the spirals, as well as three Tough and three Super Agents. I, I thought that was five for a second. My apologies. And then one Armageddon Knight to drop in. That's a pretty interesting option to play Armageddon Knight out of this. I like that idea. And then his spells, he's got one for one. Shuffle Reborn in the main deck. One Foolish Burial, one Rota, one Monster Reborn, Soul Charge, Spiral Mission. Uh, one Fully Armed, two Big Reds, one Resort, three Foolish Burial Goods, and three Scapegoat to make the Link plays. Then he's run, running three Evenly Matched in the main deck, as well as one Judgment and Spiral Mission Rescue in the, in the main deck as well, of course. Uh, his side deck contains Dimensional Barrier and three Mind Crush to, to counter against those Evenly Matched. Uh, th two Twin Twisters, three Magical Springs, one Raigeki, two Chaos Hunter, and uh, I cannot make out those other two cards. Oh, it looks as me as, as it may be uh, one Kumungus, and uh, I cannot read out what that third one is. It could be anything, one something one something card. I cannot read. I apologize to you guys. My, my reading is not too bad, but uh, these guys' writing is a little bit uh, higher tier than I can fight against, if you know what I mean. We've got Ancient Fairy Dragon, Firewall Dragon, one Saryu, just Skull Dread, Borolo Dragon. He's got Mrs. Radiant, Link Spider, Link Karibo, Proxy Dragon, Tako Talker, Ningirsu, one Underclock Taker, two Double Helix, and well as, mm, I cannot read the last ones. I think that is uh, Princess Sprite, Sylvan Princess Sprite, and uh, mm, I'm sorry guys, this is getting difficult. I can't really break down all of these cards because these guys is writing. This is goes to show that, honest to God, I think a lot of people should start typing up their deck lists for their regional tops. It would probably make it out to be easier. But, of course, maybe they needed to get cards at the event, so I can't hold it against them completely. Chicken Scratch is not everyone's uh, greatest language. So, yeah, no, uh, I can see that basically he, this guy is running the similar variant to the other one we had saw, where he's using scapegoats to kind of manipulate his board and play out his Saryuja Skull Dreads. He's using as much power as possible to bring out his Sleeper, just like a previous deck, except this guy is not opting to run Pseudo Space. He is simply pushing forward with Shuffle Reborn and a higher trap content, which is good for him. His side deck is a little bit more aggressive to counter the... Very obviously strong pendulum matchup that he's having to play against, so good on this Spiral player. Next up and last for this, we have another uh, Magician deck, the one that topped here. Uh, let's take a look at the differences from the other ones. It seems as though he's running... Uh, let's take a look. He does not... Yep, it doesn't look like he's opting to play the... Uh, to play the Mythical Beast engine in here. Instead, he's more so trying to play around with, it seems, uh, more hand traps. He's running the Ash Blossoms in the main. He's got three Astrographs, one Stargazer, three Chronograph, one Time Gazer. I like the fact that he knows what he's putting in his deck exactly. Three Purple Poisons, two Oaf Dragons, three Wisdom Eye, three Black Fang, three Harmonizing, three Dark Worms, two Gate Zeros, and of course his Ash Blossoms. Then he's running only six spells. One Star Pendulum Graph, Duelist Alliance, Foolish Burial, Dragon Shrine, and two Wavering Eyes. Notice that none of these decks are playing Luster Pendulum. It seems as though they're opting to play different options and adding in more Supreme King stuff to basically make up for the inability to use Luster Pendulum in its full power. And then he's running three evenly matched in the main and one time Pendulum Graph. That, that is a little confusing considering that there may be remaining cards on the board after he sets up, but if the case shows then against all of the players he was playing against, that's often going to be wiping all of their pendulum scales out so that they can't be playing the game. So evenly matched may actually show up to be a strong card in the opening turn. It seems as though this player is going to be wanting to go second, just uh, off of a uh, cursory glance in my head. Uh, let's go over to his side deck. He's got one one double helix, one ABC dragon, uh, uh, dragon buster. He's got two Kumongus, three Ghost Reaper, one Wavering Eyes, three Cosmic Cyclones, three D-Barriers, and a Solemn Judgment. It seems as though he's got his Ghost Reapers to get around the th two decks that he feels like are his weakness, his ABCs, and his Spirals. And that's an interesting option. That's good to know his weakness and play to, its adv play to his advantage in his side deck. Then for his extra deck, he's got two Heavy Metal Foes Electromite, Decode Talker, one Tornado Dragon, one Baguska, one Time Star Magician, one Performage Trip. Performance Trapeze Magician. That's pretty interesting. Nice little option there for an OTK. One Dark, uh, let's see, Dark, one Supreme King Dark Rebellion, one Norito, one Absolute Dragon, one Vortex Dragon, 
uh, one Supreme King Starving Venom and one Supreme King Clear Wing. Uh, one Boralode and one Ignister because opting into play Ignister only takes a tuner pendulum and a non-tuner pendulum monster. So good for him. So overall, it seems as though all of these decks that have done well, let's just take a look for the sec last one. Yep, that's, that's the whole thing. Overall, all the decks that have opted to do well in this have been running varying different degrees of stuff in their side deck that have been trying to play to going uh, second, it seems. And that's probably what's going to be revealing as the game progresses. A lot of the players are going to wanting to be going second because breaking the board in this format seems a little less uh, intimidating than breaking the board last format. And with that, guys, I hope you enjoyed this overall review of all the decks. I know this was a longer video than normal, and I appreciate you guys for sitting in and listening. And if you enjoyed enjoyed seeing this, this little report type scenario where I go over the deck list, post a comment below on what you feel like is the strongest deck at that regional. Do you think the Magicians did because they were the most represented, or do you feel like that Shadow Dino deck was super low-key strong and could have completely dominated all? And with that, I'll catch you guys later. This is Mystic V, and I'm signing off.